Whatever your thoughts on Ad Astra may be, we really should applaud 20th Century Fox on taking a chance on such a thought-provoking original sci-fi film by such a niche director in James Gray. As a result, does the film join the ranks of the great sci-fi movies of the 21st century? My thoughts on the film, coming up. Did you rub my land? Hey, how's it going everyone and welcome to Film Speak, where film is our second language. I'm Griffin, as always, and if film is your second language, consider hitting that subscribe button for more insightful and articulate film discourse and analysis. Ad Astra is directed by James Gray and it stars Brad Pitt, Liv Tyler, Ruth Nega, Donald Sutherland, and Tommy Lee Jones. The film follows Roy McBride as he journeys across a lawless solar system to to find his missing father, a renegade scientist who poses a threat to humanity. So I just want to get something out of the way first here. The trailers have been pitching this film as a great action-filled sci-fi epic. And while it borrows from the theatrics a film like that would have, this is a very personal character-driven story that has a rather methodical pace. And truthfully, Ad Astra was all the better for it. James Gray crafts a interesting, insightful, introspective, and personal journey of a man trying trying to rediscover his humanity, and as a result, it's a commentary on what it means to be human. And Gray uses McBride as the vessel for this contemplative narrative. Roy is someone who's being split in two. He's sent on this mission to try and recover his father, but he's also gone down a similar path as his father, as he's become obsessed with his work in space travel and finding extraterrestrial life. But he's also being pulled by his Earth roots in way of his relationship with Liv Tyler. He wants to have a normal life, to find love, to make a connection, to be human, but it comes at the expense of his work. And so the film really grapples with this man trying to figure out who he wants to be. Astra deals a lot with the relationships between fathers and sons. Do they want to live in the shadow of their dad only to become exactly like him? Or can they branch out and become their own person? And as Roy begins to go on this journey, he discovers a deep-rooted pain that has afflicted him for as long as he can remember. And he has to either accept or deny that his dad may be the source of that pain. It's a deeply human and relatable experience that is beautifully felt through Pitt's acting and through James Gray allowing these intimate character moments to take its course. And while the story truthfully is simple and familiar, it's also never been told with this amount of gravitas. In fact, it feels like it should be a two and a half hour long space epic, but Gray was able to condense that into just over two hours and my only complaint is that it wasn't longer. I could have spent so much time in this world and with this character experiencing the progression he goes through. Throughout the film, we get a lot of narration from Roy and Brad Pitt is just there to really sell the emotions with such nuance. This is 100% Brad Pitt's movie. It's Brad Pitt and James Gray, but Brad Pitt carries this through his central and internalized performance. As he goes on this journey, we really see a slow and subtle transition through Roy's character, and it allows Brad Pitt to exercise the full range of his acting abilities. And as a result, Brad Pitt probably gives one of the best performances of his career. Not something overly flashy, but it's one that's very somber and it'll stick with you because of how human it is. And while Brad Pitt is doing a lot of the heavy character lifting here, James Gray is the one who sells it through his cerebral direction. He's not afraid to delicately pace the narrative here as each of the stops along Roy's journey serves as an integral character moment, allowing Roy to get in touch with his emotions and progress his inner conflict. This helps better define what it is that Roy wants and who it is he wants to be. And while a very different movie, this pacing and narrative structure did remind me 
of Apocalypse Now. One of Gray's finest touches was how he realized the world of the film. It's not too distant from the world we live in, but it clearly paints a picture of the direction we're heading in when it comes to space travel. When Roy arrives on the moon, there are different lunar bases for different countries, and there's this neutral area known as No Man's Land, where pirates in neighboring countries battle each other for control of what is essentially an ocean. Yes, that means there are space pirates in this movie. The vibrant and striking cinematography by Hoyt Van Hoytema, very much Blade Runner inspired and some of the best of the year, I might add. The moody score by Max Richter and some incredibly immersive and authentic sound design ask you to embark on this journey with Roy as you're transported to new but familiar worlds just seen through a new lens. Before I give you my final verdict on Ad Astra, guys, why don't you take a second here and like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to this channel for more insightful and articulate film discourse and analysis. To put it simply, Ad Astra is the perfect kind of sci-fi for me. It's a character-driven narrative that's deeply introspective and asks questions about our own humanity, and uses the backdrop of a slightly futuristic outer space to texturize and better define the progression of these characters. It's a film that has shades of Blade Runner, Interstellar, and Apocalypse Now as Roy embarks on an exploration of self-discovery. It's technically masterful, and it left a profound impression on me leaving the theater. And so, for all of these reasons, and the reasons I've mentioned throughout my review, I'm ultimately going to be giving Ad Astra a 9.5 out of 10. And now I want to hear from you all. I want to know what your favorite sci-fi space travel film is down in the comment section below. I'm talking films like 2001, Interstellar, you name it. And while you're down there, if you've seen Ad Astra, be sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions on that film as well. As always, guys, you can like Filmspeak on Facebook by searching Filmspeak Official, and you can follow us on Twitter simply by searching underscore Filmspeak. And lastly, if you like me specifically and you like what I have to say, you can give me a follow on Twitter at Griff Schiller. All right, that's going to do it for this review, guys. And until next time, take care.